Let's jump into a classic numerical limits problem. What this is basically asking us to do is to find the limit of a function, in this case it's the limit as x approaches 2, of x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2. We're going to do that by evaluating in numbers really, really, really close to x equals 2. So we're going to approach x equals 2 numerically instead of looking at it graphically. It says, the problem that is, estimate the limit using a table of values, uh, this, then graph the function using a calculator to check your answer. Already got the graph, y'all. We'll get to that shortly. So all you need to do is take numbers really close to 2, plug them into this function with a calculator or by hand, and we'll find our limit. Let's see how this works. It's an important problem, and it's classic. So first, we're going to get really close to 2. So we'll start at like 1.9. And so we're approaching from the left here, right? So we're moving to the, to the right from the left. And let's do it. Well, we've got 1.9. 1.99 gets a little bit closer. And a little bit closer will be 1.999. Now let's go from the right-hand side. So we're moving from the, well, again, right in towards the left in this case, towards 2 from the right-hand side. So that would be 2.1, a little bit closer. 2.01, a little bit closer, 2.001. And we're just going to plug these values into this function and see what we get, and the limit will appear. So I've already got those numbers plugged into my calculator, as a good chef always should be prepared on a cooking show. I've already got the, the meal cooked. So 1.9, when we plug that in, is equal to 3.9. 1.99 is going to be equal to, well, in normal words, is 3.99. 1.999 is 3.999. Now, at x equal to 2, when you plug that in the calculator, you're going to get an error. So we will get an error. We'll find out later on that that's considered actually indeterminate. That's for a lesson in the not too distant future. Then if we plug in, I'm going to go to 2.1, 4.1. And as we get a little bit closer to the x value from the right side, 2.01 gets plugged in, we get 4.01. And you guessed it, the final number when we plug in 2.001 is 4. 0.001. Well, let's see. What are we approaching from the left side and from the right side? Well, as we get closer and closer to 2, the x values, obviously getting closer to 2 from both sides, the y value is sandwiching in on 4. So while there's an error in your calculator, what that actually means graphically is there's a hole there at x equals 2. But as we approach from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side, as we saw numerically, we are approaching a y value of 4. It's as simple as that. I love the table problems. They're classic, simple ways of seeing numerically how we approach an x value from both sides and then approach a y value, the same y value, making the limit exist to whatever that number is. Let's do one more of these just to get it down, and we'll do it with a different looking uh, function. So. Same exact directions, estimate the limit using a table of values, then graph the function using a calculator to check your answer. Well, I've got the graph of it, more on that shortly. Let's first look to, well, let's see. We've got three that we're approaching. The limit as x approaches three of the root of x plus six minus three all over x minus three. What the heck kind of limit is that? Look at that function, that's crazy. You're going to eventually learn how to find that limit without a calculator. So here we go. We're going to plug in numbers as we approach 3 from the left. Let's do 2 point. Uh, let's go with uh, 9. Then we'll get a little bit closer, 2.99. And then even closer, 2.999. We'll do the same thing from the right side of x equals 3. We'll go 3.1. 3.01, and 3.001. Notice I'm picking numbers that are very, very close. And then we're going to plug those values into the calculator to see what we get out. And again, I've come prepared with my calculator values already plugged in. So we've got at 2.9.1671. So we're just going to round to three decimal places. 0.16, ah, we'll do four. We'll do 4. 0.1671 at 2.99 plugged into this function. Please don't try this by hand. That would be terrible. We get 0 0.66, 0 0.166, excuse me, 7. And then 2.999 is going to give you 0 0.166, well, about 7 again, 0 0.16667, roughly that same number. 3, you're going to get an error out. 
All right, that's because there's a hole there, giving it away with the graph. Let, let's approach from the right-hand side of 3. We've got 3.1 is going to be 0 0.1662, 0 0.1662. 3.01 is 0 0.1666. Six, and 3.001 is point one, well, you guessed it, 666. Six, six. So where are we going here? We've got point 0.1667 six, six, from the left, point 0.1666 six, six, six from the right. Well, that means that we are approaching point 0.1666 six, 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 and so on and so forth, repeating on and on and on, which makes a lot of sense. Numerically, as we plug in numbers, getting closer to 3 from the left, getting closer to 3 from the right, both of those values are approaching the same y value of about 0.16 repetent or repeating. And we see on the graph here that we are very close to y equals 1 as we approach from the left side and right side of x equals 3, which is approximately 0.16 repeating. That's it. That's all about finding limits numerically. See you in the next video.